Today I'm venturing up to Meadow Lake, located in Western Region 1, to meet with 95-year-old Doreen Eglin, a retired trapper who spent most of her life in the bush. I'm looking forward to enjoying some conversation with her, as well as learn a little bit more about life as a trapper. I grew up in Leoville. That's in between here and uh, Spiritwood. It's only 25 miles from Spiritwood to where Dad's farm is. Dad, uh, he was a World War II veteran, Dad. So in the last war, when he come back, they give them soldier settlements. There was Uncle Billy, Uncle Jack, and Dad. When the war broke out in 1940, they dropped everything and they were gone. So that left Mom and me to look after the place. We had horses, we had cattle, we had pigs, and we had chickens. So therefore, he was gone for four years. He come back maybe twice in that length of time. Everybody in the old days called him Buttons. Why, I'll never know. I never did hear why, but that's what they called him. We Métis are famous for, for giving each other nicknames. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, really, eh? How old were you when you first started trapping? From 1928 to 1965, figure it out. I don't know. And who taught you uh, trapping? Happy. He was, na he was native. Tell me who Happy is. Joe Springle was his name, yeah. And that was uh, your partner? Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. Where did you s set up your trap line, and, and did you inherit your trap line? No. Uh, what happened there, an old fella lived there. He was a war veteran, and he, he got that trap line way back when, after the war ended, and he passed away. So the uh, Lennart, the DNR guy, come to me because I lived right in it, eh? And he asked me if I was interested in it. I said, sure. So he said, you be at the meeting this fall and I will turn it over to you. So that's what happened. In 1965, I went to the meeting in Green Lake and he gave me the trap line. It shows you here. I was way down here, it says here. Right here is your name, Dory. Yeah, yeah. Between zone two and zone three. That's right. What animals were you trapping at that time? And like when you first started trapping, uh, who would have taught you? you? Did you say Happy taught you everything? Yeah, well, Dad used to trap and everything, you know? So I learned it early. Yeah, and then I just went from there. What kind of animals would your would your dad trap? Oh, coyotes, wolves, uh, anything. That, we didn't have a lot of that stuff then that they have now, though. Why, I don't know, wolverines and this uh, fisher wasn't there either till on the last. I caught a big male fish and I didn't even know what it was. So I went down to the store, Neeb's store, and I asked the woman there, because they bought hides, right? Well, she said, that's an old male fisher. Well, I had never seen one or heard of one there, but I caught one. Yeah, and from there on, I caught one and two and three a month. Can you tell me what life was like on your trap line? Like what did you stay in? What did you live in? Well, I had a house there. There was two bedrooms. There was one on, that, one on that side. And then I had the kitchen. But I had no running water or nothing. The same as it is here now. I'm used to it.
Did you raise your children on the trap line, Doreen? Yeah. There was Jimmy, Betty, Nancy, Tommy, Telefanoli, and Helen. Can you describe what an average day of trapping would look like back then? I had to go out, ground up. Ted never went out. He didn't like winter. So I left Ted in the house with the kids while I went one way and the next day I'd go the other way. And I had three days that I had to cook and bake. I had to bake bread. And I didn't have this either. Uh, the old wood cook stove was still in the shed here. <laughs> yeah. And I, the only thing I used in that stove was poplar, white, dry poplar. It kept an even heat. And it wasn't like these. It had a thing on the oven that told you how hot it was. Yeah. And that's what I baked with in one thing or another. I baked bread all the time. Yep, I did so. Can you tell me about this trophy and, and the story behind it? Well, I took, uh, like I say, I got the picture of me. I took two beaver, two coyotes, a mink, and a badger. That's the only thing I had dry then. And uh, they had this uh, meeting in Prince Albert, eh? So we went, there was three of us, Ted, me, and uh, Oscar, another guy was with us with the furs. I had a whole bunch of weasels and squirrels and I had 50 squirrels and pictures here somewhere. And I took all that with me. To, but a lot of them there took the animal and skinned and stretched it there. But I had these stretched, and that's what they give me. When you got the King Trapper Award, would there have been a lot of female trappers back then, Doreen? Only one that I know of, and that was Marjorie Bell. She lives in Meadow Lake yet. Yeah, she had five kids. And uh, yeah, she did a bit of hunting and trapping, but not near as much as I did. She didn't go, out, go for it, eh? I did. Yes, I did. I got 80 bucks for a good beaver hide. When did you retire from trapping, Doreen? Retire? Yeah. After the everybody left, when the boys left, Ted left, I don't want, what am I doing this for? The last big bull moose I shot, I petted that thing. Beautiful. He was just beautiful. He was down across the Chittick River. Oh, about a quarter of a mile, I'd say. That was pretty sneaky about it. When everybody else was through hunting, I saddled up my big blue roan. You know, right on him, I could ride right up to him. They wouldn't run from the horse, right? So that's how I hunted. I'd get on that big down horse I had. I couldn't shoot off him. I'd slide out of the saddle with the gun on my shoulder with just the safety on. And when I got down, I'd just take a name out of it. And I knew what they'd do. So I'd just wait till they were right dead still and I'd fire. So once you put a moose down, who would help you skin it? And, and I gutted them by myself. I didn't skin them there. I just cleaned them. Took all the insides, everything out. Boy, I'd almost crawl inside and push them out. But I got them out anyway. Deer and moose, I cleaned them right there. And then I'd go home, eh? And next day, or maybe the same day, it all depended on when I got them. I'd hook the team up on the sleighs, me and Ted, 
and we go back out and get the animal. Ted and I would go out there and Ted would saw stick holes, you know, and he'd push it underneath the back of the moose's back, about four poles like that, and the feet were sticking. Then I'd lead the horse around to the back and tie a rope to its feet, the ones underneath, and that would just flip the animal right over on the sleigh. You had a role in, and what was the fourth signature for the fight for women's rights? Can you please tell me about that? Well, way back when the women couldn't go in the bar, and they couldn't go in other places either where there was uh, liquor in post. So they all come around, two women come to my place right out there and they were said that they were going around collecting votes for women's rights. So I voted for them. It, it didn't worry me about yeah, that, you know, but I did. And they got it through in 1967. They could go in the bar and they could go in anywhere where the men went. The men didn't like it. But so what? Before that, they couldn't. Yeah. When we met, you told me you don't you don't have furs anymore. So we've got some furs here today that we that we borrowed from martyrdoms in in Meadow Lake. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the furs that we have on the table today here? What is what is this beautiful fur here, Dory? That's a fox, cross fox. Some people call them a silver fox. I've caught them myself. Oh, yeah. I've caught the red fox, and I caught... I never did catch one like we got here, that little yellow one. But I've caught these. The belly fur is different than the fur off the back. Yeah. That's a beaver. That's a Definitely. beaver, eh? Yeah. That's a nice bird. So when 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 you were in your in your prime of your trapping years, what was the most popular fur? Was it beavers? Uh no, not really. A fisher and a link. You know, I got it up as high as seven hundred dollars a link. We have uh, a nice big brown fur here, and and again we we borrowed these furs from Mardo Dams in in Meadow yeah, Lake. Yeah, yeah. A lady there, she. Took them down and let us take them. Okay. That's a beaver, beautiful. And this one is much bigger, a little yeah. bit different color than this one. Yeah, I'd say this is a female, and that's a male. They're darker, yeah, and they have more coarser hair than the female. You got more for a female than you did a male. What do you think your life may have been like without trapping? It had been pretty skinny. And by skinny you mean? Yeah, you'd have very little. It was my privilege to sit down with Doreen, learning about trapping and some of her experiences and accomplishments. I'm hitting the road once again, journeying on to my next adventure. <laughs>